Hello everyone, welcome to or back to my channel very quickly after my last video actually. And today we are going to be swatching and doing shade comparisons for the Lunatic Labs Descendant palette. Can we just take a minute to appreciate this packaging? It's absolutely gorgeous. I got this in the mail today. I have a couple other Lunatic palettes as well as one other palette from a different brand that I would like to swatch and compare. And this is what the shades look like. I have not touched this yet. Sorry, it's a little hard to see because the packaging is so shiny. But I have not touched any of these shades yet. I'm going to be swatching them on my right hand, or right arm, and then doing the comparisons on my left arm. So if you want to see what these look like compared to my other palettes, just keep on watching. Alright, the first shade we're going to be dipping into is this Coffin Dust. This is like, a, not quite a white, it's like a very light cream shade. And that barely shows up on me, but it's actually quite opaque if you can see it. Nice. The one next to it's slightly more pink in tone, and that's the shade Warm Bones. They translate very similar on the skin, but hopefully you can tell that second Warm Bones shade is just a little bit warmer, as the name would suggest. Next we have Flesh Ground. That's kind of funny. These names crack me up. And this is like a taupe matte. Oh, that came out really nicely, I like that. And then we have Open Sesame, which is somewhere in the middle, I believe this is like more truly neutral brown. I'll set this down for a second. Yeah, so that's like a, a truly neutral brown to me, that doesn't really pull either warm or cool. This is so much easier than doing my Lime Crime palettes because it's all matte so I don't have to try to wipe glitter off of my hands. The next one is Dirt Nap which is pretty funny. And that's a warmer brown. That looks really nice. It's got good pigmentation there. We've also got Homeward Bound, which is a great movie. Very sad. The cat in that movie looks like my old cat. And that one is almost like a mud brown, if that makes any sense. That's really pretty and nice and warm as well. We have Dead Like Me, which is a great TV show that I used to watch, and if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out because it's hilarious. And this one is a bit more cool toned. It's somewhere between cool toned and like a darker version of this true neutral brown that we swatched earlier. So those two are pretty similar, but I would say Dead Like Me is just a little bit darker. And Mud Chalice down here is our dark, warm, almost reddish toned brown. Yeah, that's got like quite a red tone to it, although not quite as red as this shade right here, but still a little bit. So we got a couple more shades left, let me clean my fingers again. The last two shades in this palette are Sacred Space and Hollowed Ground, so we're going to swatch Sacred Space first. And this one is our dark, cool tone. That's nice. That's a really pretty color. And lastly, we have Hollowed Ground. This is not quite black, but it's like a gray, brown, almost black. You could definitely use this to deepen, although you wouldn't get like a true black out of it. That's still really pretty though. It's like a charcoal burnt gray. So yeah, that's the swatches for the entire Descendant palette. I didn't mention this earlier, but this palette does retail for $42, so that's more than their other palettes, but you get a lot more shades. So, if you like those shades, you know, I would say it's worth it. They feel really soft, but I haven't put them on my eyes yet, so we'll test this out as soon as I'm done swatching. Alright, we're gonna stay on brand first. I have these two Lunatic Labs palettes that I bought. One of them was from Hot Topic, and that was this Supernatural palette, and then I also have the Relic. So we can swatch Relic first, because it's the one I use the most. And I don't know if you can tell, but I've made pretty good dents in all of these shades, so I'm just gonna take my fingers. We're not gonna swatch the shimmers because there are no shimmers in this palette. I'll swatch ruins because it's practically just a black. And that is what the relic palette looks like. Let me put those on my other hand. These shades are so buttery and soft. Okay, so these are very warm toned, super orange. You know, we've got like kind of another grayish black and a warm brown. So, those are the swatches together. 
I don't think anything is like terribly similar. I think even that lightest brown from the Relic palette is a lot more pink than anything that you could find in Descendant. So I don't think any of those really match. Next up I have the Supernatural palette and this is their version of a cool tone palette. This used to be available at Hot Topic. I don't know that it is anymore. My store ran out like almost immediately. But these are the shades in here. I am going to swatch Spook because again it's not like super shimmery or metallic but Invocation is like meant to be more of a metallic shade. Alright, so those are our swatches from this palette. And there's the Supernatural swatches. I think... Well, like certainly these light shades, if my camera would focus, like the two that are on my hand here and this one here could probably be dupes for one another, although they're not exactly the same shade unless they renamed it, I'm not sure. Um, no, I don't see any, you know, maybe maybe this last one here and like either this one or that one, but pretty different. Sorry, I started getting a phone call. I had to cut that one short. It's just my work making sure that I know what's going on. Um, but no, I don't see any similarities besides that really light shade. And even still, the Supernatural shade's a little more, like, petal pink almost than the ones in this palette. Again, sorry about the light. Uh, but yeah, those are the swatches for the Lunatic palette. Let's get on to the last one. The last palette I have to compare is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye palette. I picked this up at TJ Maxx, so I did not buy this directly from Kat Von D. And even if I did, they've been repossessed. But that's not the point. I just will start swatching these by Quadrant. I'm going to start with the neutral one right here. And I still think this is a good quality palette. I'm just curious to see how the shades really match up. Because they are, like, so neutral, both of them. Okay, so that's the true neutral. You can see we have uh, two matte shades here. Well, they're all matte, but, like, the white mattes. So, again, you're probably going to find pretty similar there. Okay, so this shade right here looks like this neutral brown right there. Like, quite similar, actually. And then as far as this one here, I don't really see anything that matches all too well. But there is one <laughs> right there. Hopefully you can see it. Oh, actually, the one next to it. Hmm. This guy right here. Kind of, but not quite. Like, I think the Lunatic one's just a little bit darker. Next up, we have our little cool tone quadrant in the middle. Got our transition color up here, a deepener, and a stark black and a stark white. And now, like I said, this Lunatic palette does not have a black or a white in it, but they have very similar shades. Can you hear my cat crying in the background? Alrighty. So the closest thing we're going to get to that black is Hollowed Ground, which actually, with the pigment levels from the Kat Von D, they're pretty similar looking. This super dark, like, second to last dark brown in the Lunatic palette looks a bit like the deepening shade in the Kat Von D palette. And of course we have our matte white, which is as close as we're going to get in this new palette. And those shades are a little bit the same, but not quite. Like this one's not nearly as cool toned as our cool toned shade in the Lunatic palette. So those, those two compared. And lastly we have our warm tone quadrant over here, which includes this kind of salmony color, this rust color like a warm brown, and then another kind of lighter salmon color. So the variety in this palette is not great, but the subtleties certainly are there. Okay, and again we look here, and I think the Kat Von D is definitely more orange, whereas the warm tones in the Lunatic palette tend to lean more on the red side and not so much orange. Yeah, I don't see anything that's really screaming out to me. Well, there you have it. I think out of all these palettes, the Descendant palette is definitely the most pigmented. I mean, look, just look at how pure these swatches are. I mean, this is insane. The pigment on this, they look like they swatched beautifully. So I'm really excited to play with this on the eyes. I'm going to actually do that today because I haven't done my makeup yet today. But yeah, there you have it. I didn't find a whole ton of similarities, but, um, you know, even within their own brand, like, they seem to have changed it up enough that I don't think any of these shades are just repackaged. 
But yeah, let me go ahead and move on to the eye look, and then we'll talk review. Alright, so I hope I'm in focus. I have my palette here, my face is done, my eyes are primed with the Urban Decay Primer Potion, which is what I've been using lately. And we're just going to get into this palette. So I've got my brushes. I'm going to be taking this flat elf brush. It's like a very short, dense, fluffy thing. I'm going to be setting my lid area with this first matte white shade here, this Coffin Dust. I'm just going to take that and pat it basically all over the crease. I'm actually going to be using this mirror too because I can't see very well and I don't want to completely block my eye from you guys. I like the way that's setting it. It's practically my skin tone. Maybe like a little bit more yellow, but I like the coverage and whatnot I get from this. Okay. Now I'm going to put my mirror down so it doesn't fall off my... I'm using my shoe rack to hold my mirror right now, so that's fun. I'm going to be taking this fluffy brush from BH Cosmetics. This is from their fairy something that fairy collection that they came out with and I think I'm gonna use open sesame in the crease I'll just take a dip in there and there's like very minimal kick up in these pans I don't know if you can tell I mean I'm pretty light-handed but like that's not too bad compared to some other palettes I own <laughs> if you heard that kind of gack noise in the background that's my cat he's on medication I'm sorry ooh that's nice Wow, that's pretty. Great pigmentation. I feel like I barely needed to blend that. And dip back in. Do the other eye. I feel like these are more pigmented than their other palettes. Like the other palettes, sometimes I have to dip in a couple times just to get like a crease color down like this. Which doesn't bother me because I would rather have that than a pigmented shade that doesn't blend out, but this is really nice. It's pigmented and I didn't have to spend a lot of time blending it, so I'm excited. I'm going to take, there we go, I'm going to take this kind of fluffy pointed brush from Japanesque, and I don't know where you can get this set. It was a gift, unfortunately. Um, and I'm going to take Dead Like Me, which is another one of those kind of neutrally brown shades, and I'm just going to deepen up that crease. And again, I'm not seeing like any fallout with this shade at all, so that's really cool. I'm going to go back into this shade. I think I maybe didn't pick up quite enough on the brush. Okay, that's better. Okay, I'm going to take a smaller version of this brush, same brand, also Japanesque, just a little bit shorter, a little bit more concentrated, and I'm going to take Sacred Space, and we're going to deepen up that same area just a little bit more. This one has a little bit more kick up in the pan, but I mean that's never bothered me, if it's something that bothers you, it's just, you know, letting you know, but it doesn't bother me. <laughs> Continue to deepen that crease and outer V a little bit. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. This is so hard for me. I like from this distance. I can barely see my eye and what I'm doing, so hopefully it translates better on camera because I'm blind. I'm so blind. And lastly, we're going to be taking a small 
a really dense brush. This is also from the BH Cosmetics Fairy Whatever collection. And I'm going to be using hollowed ground just on the outer V to really give it some depth. I keep trying to use the mirror in that, but it's tiny, so I can't see. Nice. That's the one thing I'll say about the mirrors, is that they're really small. And for someone like me, if I'm doing makeup on camera, I can't use it. I'm taking this down into the lower lash line as well. Just because it's... my sight is so bad. That I can't use those mirrors. This is extraordinarily pigmented and beautiful. Okay, lastly for the upper lid, actually two more steps. No, I'm just kidding. Not last. I'm going to be taking this super fluffy black thing. This is also BH Cosmetics. I also don't know what set this is, unfortunately. I'm going to be going back into Open Sesame and I'm just going to run this through the crease to kind of blend everything together. Just kind of unify it a little bit in case I accidentally got rid of some of that lightness in there. Okay. I'm going to be going back in with that same brush that I used to set the lid. And I'm going to be taking warm bones right here and putting that all over the lid. I think the mark of a truly good light cream matte shade is if you can put it on the lid after you've already done your crease and everything. Because if you can, that means it's got pigmentation and it's not just turning to dust on your face. So there we go. I'm going to actually, I'm going to take this same brush really fast and just put a mixture of Open Sesame and Dead Like Me on the lower lash line just to kind of blend out that really dark shade. We're not just having like super stark lines on our lower lash like that. Okay, I'm gonna go put on some liner and do an inner corner highlight with like my highlighter or a different palette since this one does not have any shimmery highlights and I will be right back to talk about the look. Okay, so this is the final look. Hopefully you can kind of see it. I'll zoom in a little bit. Take my glasses off. I really like it. I think this palette is really versatile. The shades perform extremely well. Like. This is a palette I can see myself using by itself, as well as a companion piece to a lot of other palettes. If you have something like, if you have one of their other palettes and you like only a specific like set of tones, like you want the warm tones or the cool tones, and you're happy with that, I don't think you need this. But if you're somebody who doesn't really own a wide range of mattes, even if you have the shade and light, they're so wildly different. Like the difference is, I mean you saw the, the shade comparisons I did first. Um, but I, I definitely think this is a lot more interesting a uh, color scheme, like for an all matte neutral palette. I think this is beautiful. I'm going to be using this all the time. I already used my other two Lunatic palettes to death. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So if you did, you could leave a like, comment, subscribe, something like that. It'd be really cool. I'm trying super hard to be more consistent about uploads, especially because I am in quarantine and my store is still closed. So, yeah, let me know what you guys want to see next. I, I love this. It's me approved, if that means anything. <laughs> so, have a good day. I'll see you guys next time.